In the movie The Day After Tomorrow, scientists start by warning about a possible catastrophe, but they are not heard. Unfortunately, this is quite common for climate scientists. And they are not heard because it is not in the interest of political leaders to take the necessary measures to stop the continuous escalation of global warming, until what they feared happens. An important Atlantic current system collapses, resulting in total climate imbalance, which triggers extreme storms, floods, tornadoes, and the onset of a new ice age. It seems kind of contradictory that global warming could cause cooling, but that's just because the movie is fiction, right? I have to say it makes sense. And yes, it is possible. New studies indicate that this important ocean current system, called AMOC, Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, is on the path to collapse. And what would be the consequences of this collapse? Does this mean that we will enter a new ice age and that we should expect the plot of the movie the day after tomorrow to become reality? The collapse of the AMOC is one of several tipping points of the Earth's system. Points that, if surpassed, will result in disastrous consequences and threats to all areas. Biodiversity, health, economy, food security. But what are these points of no return? And is it still possible to prevent them from being crossed? If you stay until the end of this video, that question will be answered. But it is more urgent for us to talk about AMOC. Hey, Pedro here. This video you are watching was originally in Portuguese, my native language. This is the attempt of our team to translate it to English, and I sincerely hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is extremely important to us. Now, back to the video. To understand the possible collapse of the AMOC, we need to know how ocean circulation works. The ocean plays an important role in absorbing energy, heat, and distributing it more evenly around the Earth. Ocean circulation occurs in two ways driven by wind and by density. In wind-driven circulation, it pushes the surface of the water and we have surface currents, also called horizontal currents. The warm surface currents transport heat from the equator towards the north and south poles. And the cold currents come from polar and temperate latitudes and tend to flow towards the equator region. These currents are deflected because of the Coriolis force, which exists due to the Earth's rotation. This deflection helps form circulation systems that we call gyres. In the gyres, water flows in a circular pattern, clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere, and these gyres occur in all ocean basins. The Gulf Stream is an example of a surface current that is part of the North Atlantic subtropical gyre. It carries warmer waters from the tropical region to the north of the Atlantic. In density-driven circulation, the currents move up and down the water column. These are the vertical currents, and we call it thermohaline circulation, where thermo means heat and haline means salt. Precisely because the movement caused by density differences comes from the variation in temperature and salinity. Here's how it works. With more heat, there is a decrease in density, and more salt causes an increase in the water's density. Winds move warm surface waters to cooler regions, where they then lose heat to the atmosphere. This loss of heat makes the water colder and denser, causing it to sink. And there is also the formation of sea ice, and as the seawater freezes, the salt is forced out of the ice, increasing the salinity of the surrounding water. The cold, salty water near the North and South Poles becomes denser and because of this, it sinks into the ocean, while the warmer and less dense water comes to replace the sinking water, as shown in this NASA animation. All of this is connected, and this movement functions like an oceanic conveyor belt, a global current system that carries heat to various parts of the world. And it is fundamental to the climate system and the cycles of carbon dioxide and nutrients, Okay, but where does the AMOC fit into this story, and why should you care? The AMOC, or Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, is part of this complex global ocean current system and carries heat to various parts of the globe, having a strong influence on the Earth's climate and also transporting nutrients necessary to sustain marine life. We have had measurements of the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, but through studies we know that it has already experienced slowdowns and even complete stops in the past. But even so, the circulation of AMOC has weakened in the last century, and studies indicate this weakening has an anthropogenic cause. It is being caused by us, human beings. All over the world, average temperatures are rising, but there is a cooling region located in the North Atlantic. This region is called the cold blob and is considered a symptom of the slowdown of the AMOC. 
The AMOC also experiences oscillations that can be due to natural variability or a response to the warming of the system. But the tipping point, that is, the stoppage, the collapse point, exists. And there are uncertainties about how close we are to this point. Some climate models have suggested that the risk of AMOC collapse this century is low, as stated in the most recent IPCC report, the AR6. And it asserts this with medium confidence. But a study published in 2023 brought a different conclusion that the collapse is likely between 2025 and 2095. The study's method raised questions because it is based on statistical analysis related to sea surface temperature, and there are no direct measurements of the AMOC, which could be a limitation. But there are studies using other methods pointing in the same direction. Okay, but why is there this divergence between some models and these new studies? One theory is that the models may be underestimating the risk, disregarding important factors, and giving the AMOC more stability than they should. The fact is that we need more studies. An even more recent one, published in 2024, concludes that the AMOC indeed has a tipping point if the North Atlantic experiences a large influx of freshwater. That is more freshwater entering from rain, river runoff, or ice melt, such as from the Greenland ice sheet. The AMOC is very sensitive to this large influx of fresh water because it reduces salinity and consequently density, weakening and slowing down its circulation. And guess what? Global warming is causing this forcing. The study showed this in a state-of-the-art coupled global climate model, which combines ocean and atmosphere. And the method was as follows. After the tipping point was found, it was used to identify precursors that could alert us, which would be the early warning signals. In summary, the model was used to better understand what the warning signs would be, and then the researchers analyzed observational data that suggests the AMOC is on the path to collapse. This study does not provide an estimate of when the tipping point will be reached, but it mentions that the study published in 2023 may be accurate. And what would be the consequences of the collapse of the AMOC? The movie The Day After Tomorrow revolves around this collapse. In the movie, this would result in extreme storms and the freezing of much of the Northern Hemisphere. But how much of this is real? Of course, there are Hollywood exaggerations, especially in the intensity and speed of events. But according to a new study, the collapse of the AMOC would drastically change the redistribution of heat. The Northern Hemisphere would cool and the Southern Hemisphere would warm relative to what we have today. In a vast region of Europe, the average annual trend of atmospheric surface temperature would change by about 1 degree Celsius per decade, with even greater variation in some months of the year. For several cities, temperatures drop between 5 degrees Celsius and 15 degrees Celsius. It may seem like a small change, but here we are not talking about weather, but climate. And this change in a climatic average means a lot. The Amazon rainforest would see drastic changes in rainfall patterns, the dry and rainy seasons would be inverted. And these changes could disrupt the forest ecosystem and potentially lead to its tipping point. Other analyses project a collapse according to the global warming scenario. A report by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD for example, indicates that in a scenario of 2.5 degrees Celsius of global warming, in addition to the cooling of the northern hemisphere, there would be abrupt changes in weather patterns, the hydrological cycle, sea level, the absorption of carbon dioxide by the ocean, the disruption of the marine ecosystem, and a critical threat to the planet's food security. Although we cannot say with absolute certainty if or when this will happen, several more recent studies are indicating that the risk is much greater than we previously thought. It is a real risk and needs to be taken seriously because the collapse of AMOC would be a disaster on a planetary scale. This collapse is one of several tipping points of the Earth system, and we will talk more about tipping points in another video. Basically, these tipping points or points of no return are thresholds beyond which a small change can lead a system to a completely new state, that is, it can change abruptly and even irreversibly. There is concern about the tipping points also regarding the potential for a cascade effect, a domino effect on other points, as is the case here. The collapse of the AMOC could contribute to and push the Amazon to its tipping point. And this raises the question, can we avoid the collapse of the AMOC? To avoid not only this but other tipping points, we need to act on the main factor, which is global warming. 
Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, humanity has been increasing the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, especially carbon dioxide, CO2. And this has been causing the warming of the atmosphere, the ocean, and the Earth's surface. And this global warming leads to changes in climate patterns. Climate change translates into many aspects and is pushing us to surpass these various tipping points. We need to drastically and rapidly reduce greenhouse gas emissions and achieve net zero carbon dioxide emissions in the coming decades to curb ongoing global warming. And this is what is called climate change mitigation, and it is not a simple task. But we will also talk more about this subject in other videos here on Scienceverse. But I would like to hear from you. What do you think we could do as humanity to reduce our impact on the climate? Type your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to leave your like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much and see you next time.